You wouldn't have all this surprise. A surprise. Well, not surprise. It was a feeling of shock. When something unexpected happens. Have you ever been surprised? Anybody in church? Amen. I'm going to on three points tonight. First, you have a surprise request. Then, you have a surprise response. And lastly, you have a surprise repentance. Surprise request. Surprise response. And lastly, surprise repentance. Church, the Bible says that Jesus was passing through Jericho. And there was a man by the name of Zacchaeus. Now we know that Zacchaeus, we know that he was a Jew. Verse 9 tells us that. Jesus says, this day salvation comes to this house for as much as he also is the son of Abraham. So we know he was a Jew. But we also know that he was a tax collector. Now you have a situation where the Jews are in oppre under oppression to the Romans and the Romans have them under governance and the Romans are extorting, burning some taxes from them. But you have a situation where the Romans have employed Jews as tax collectors and publicans functioning amen, as Roman servants and, uh, and carrying out this oppressive taxation upon their own Jewish comrades. So in the eyes of the Jews, people like Zacchaeus were traitors. A Jew working for the Romans collecting taxes. And the thing about these tax collectors is that they had a reputation. None of them were honest. They always took more than the due amount. Are you with me? And the Bible said that Zacchaeus, he heard about Jesus. Verse 4. No, verse 3. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. And could not for the press because he was, he was little of stuff and he was short. So he climbed up in a tree to see Jesus when Jesus passed. He sought, he sought to see Jesus who he was. It means that he heard about Jesus. And he is, he is curious because he has heard about this man and he wants to see who this man is now. Are you with me, church? And the Bible says in verse 5 that Jesus, Jesus called, came to the place and Jesus looked up, verse 5, and saw the man and Jesus said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Church, this is a surprise request. Why is it a surprise? Because these two gentlemen had to come. reputation of being a holy man, a prophet of God. The last part of chapter 18 right there in Jericho, Jesus just healed a blind man just before this event. He was a miracle worker. A prophet of God, a holy man. Zacchaeus on the other hand had a reputation of being a evil traitor. A robber of poor people. And you know how poor people hate those who rob poor people. And the Bible was careful to mention about Zacchaeus that he was chief among the publicans. And the Bible said he was rich. So the Bible is helping you to understand that how much he has extorted and that he had gained his wealth off the backs of the innocent. And the question then is, why would Jesus, why would Jesus want to associate a holy man with an evil trait of a man, sin of a man. That's the question. Why would Jesus want to associate with this man? So when Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down today, I will dine at your house, it was a surprise. 
request. And people still ask that question today. Why would Jesus want to associate with good for nothing, with sinners? And hear me, not just sinners, you know, but sinners with a reputation. You see? <laughs> you can think of any sinners with a reputation in church. What would Jesus have to do with a sinner with reputation? You don't have to go far for the answer. Because the right hand was sin. Everybody needs to sin. For the Son of God is come to seek and to save that which was lost. End of text. You couldn't find a better summary of Jesus' mission than that. He has come to seek and save. And don't just focus on save, but also be mindful. Seek. I'm going somewhere important tonight. The God of the Old Testament. The God of Mount Sinai. Jehovah God. The Bible said, when Jehovah appeared on Mount Sinai with Moses, there was lightnings and thunders and the sound of a trumpet pump. The God of the Old Testament on Mount Sinai, he said, I am on the mountain. And he tells Israel, you have to come to me. And don't even come to me if you don't qualify or else you die. Focusing on the word seek. The God of the Old Testament said to a man, seek me. When, the, when Christ came in the New Testament, he came to give you a complete or an updated revelation of God. Because the Old Testament revelation of God was only half of the picture of who God is. The Bible says in John chapter 1, no man has seen God at any time, but Christ, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Go see it. Hallelujah. In other words, Jesus Christ in his person revealed not the sight, not the height of God, the complexion of God, the color of the light of the length of his head. Jesus Christ in his person revealed the heart of Jehovah God. So when Christ came, he didn't say, I am here, come to me. The attitude of Christ is, Sinner, you don't move. Sinner, don't move, sinner. But then Jesus of Nazareth said, I am coming to you. And then coming he came, and he come on, man, bro. Man, don't forget where the journey started. It started in glory, in purple. Something you see, Jenny? Let's show you around the middle of What that folks are thinking in the first century? Royal theater and government to the couple of people next century. All right? And the king was up there in Crown's church, and he began his journey from way up there, come way down here in a manger with cows. Some of them defecate, the owner ain't clean it yet. The manger ain't smelling good at all. Amen. And born among me and struggling in a church. Pursuing man. <laughs> I am at the church. And Jesus Christ called the words that he was. Matthew tax collectors. Glory to God. Jesus Christ called Zacchaeus. Called the woman caught in adultery. Called the woman at the well. All these things Jesus doing. And we focus only on his miracles. And we bypass. Reputation. 
Because Jesus tried, Jesus was trying to send him a message. I said, I'm trying to send tonight. Sinners will be ashamed of themselves. And the Lord sent me to tell you, listen, if Jesus was ashamed, he's not ashamed to associate with sinners. Not ashamed to draw near to sinners. Not ashamed to minister to sinners. Or else he would have sent him. Not Nothing of this sort. You might have given a cold. Are you with me, church? Or you might have not bothered. I want to understand that. Listen, I almost call you in this sermon pushing the point of proving the issue because there is an issue that God anointed me to send before you wrap your come and you miss it. Because every man has to come into the fullness and he walk with Jesus before it's too late. And for, and for that to happen, you have to understand the radical, biblical, New Testament nature of God's love. So Jesus is saying, hey, it is because Jesus is so unashamed and because he wants to prove the point that he's unashamed, that he called to this man, Lord! So you in church, and you struggling with your sin, and you feeling shame. Because you shame are your son. The Lord tell me to tell you, even if you are shame are your son, the say the Lord, I am not that shame are you. Yeah. That's it, Jesus Christ shall I say no, I don't want to say that. Or oh, oh, oh. him off. Exalt. You have to stop wasting Oh, yeah. 
you that red you that sinners, sinners. They don't know. I didn't worry. But the Lord said, I wasn't worried. So you are not right to be worried. Jesus wasn't worried about the talk. When reaching to you, so you shouldn't worry about the talk. Reach into the man. Reach to Jesus with all your heart, mind, and soul. People are going to pray to you. Shoot you down. 
When a man with a sleeve for 41, you understand? And he passed and he said, hey, what would I do? He said, I can discharge everybody here. Okay, okay, okay. You get it? You get it? That's how you do it. Listen, when you get healed from a school, that didn't generate any talk. You don't understand Jesus. Jesus will pursue you. Hey, maybe you're in church tonight and you have a mountain and you see that insurmountable in your eyes and in your eyes are men who will stereotype you or put you in a certain bracket, glory to God. You are just an opportunity waiting for God to get some glory. Because when I read my scripture, I get to realize the worst condition and the worst reputation are the people that Jesus go after. Because when those persons get touched and transformed, it creates the greatest talk and the greatest adoration for Jesus and the greatest commentary. Glory to God. That when a man come out with that, with healing from a kidney stone or cancer, it, it creates a talk. Let me tell you something. You have to stick it out with the Lord Jesus Christ because I want you to understand that what the Lord wants to do in your life, amen, if you, hey, hey, if you allow Jesus to do what God intends to do in your life, he sent me to tell you, he going to make you talk and talk. He's going to make you talk in that conversation. You know why? Because Jesus Christ, when he gets fully where I'm playing, to operate in a man's life, there is going to be such a drastic and dramatic change to from who you are to what God is making you to be that the cannot be missed and it must be observed by God. Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, 
Half of my goods I give to the poor. And I have, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I insult them fourfold. Everybody wants to know that one thing. You guys even start about this? And I have seen this for years, I have probably seen it in the world of the You guys even start about this? The things that have never pointed out in my history. They call it a surprise in 10 times. They are going with this. I'm going with the reality that this we don't understand God happening. We don't understand. We don't understand God loving. And as I mentioned last week, we preach the gospel in the wrong order with the wrong priority. We preach obedience to God before we preach faith and we preach faith before we preach love. And we preach love to God, faith to God, and we to God before we preach God and for man. Before I realize that when a man understands that he is loved by God, he will love God. When a man understands that he is loved by God, he is going to trust God. When a man understands that he is loved by God, he will obey God. And listen, the, the foundation message that this trigger man's response of love, faith, and obedience is the simple message that God loves that. Because Jesus Christ never pointed out Zacchaeus out and said, God, I hear about you. And I know it's true. You ain't good for nothing, Zacchaeus. And I want you to have another look at your ways. You really need to change. Nothing of the sort, church. What did Jesus do? Jesus turned to a man who had a reputation who everybody in Jericho the shun. And Jesus said, we show him my love. Jesus showed him my family. Jesus said, today I come in to dine at your house. Listen, everything we need to understand about the gospel is right there. Listen to me. Why is you waiting to do something to prove to your conscience that you deserve to be in God's presence? The Lord say you are wasting your time because no, nothing that you do, even if it impress your conscience, it doesn't impress me. God is saying, listen, even whilst you haven't done anything yet, Jesus is forthcoming with love and attention. So listen, you need to understand that when Jesus Christ showed Zacchaeus the kind of love and attention that he showed to Zacchaeus, that was the breaking point, church. I'm not going to tell you something. You really don't need to tell us in any last You know. Every sinner knows that sinner. I'm not going to tell you that. Let me help you understand what Satan doing. Satan is looking for every opportunity to create an argument to know. And what he's doing and what he loves to do, he wants to use you to give him ammunition. Because I'm gonna tell something. The man is going to respond to the love of God and discover things for himself. Amen. So Jesus never brought it up. The man experienced the love of God and he volunteered the past. He said, he said, listen, if I steal anything from the poor, I give back and listen four times, amen. Etc. Because why? Because the man encountered the love of God. And the love of God motivated the man to live holy on the Lord. And that goes to me. I'm going to tell you something. You're in church, you are a sinner, or you are saved. And you, you're focusing too much. Or only. I realize people in church suffer from the same thing as sinners. When they go and have a picture, they tell sinners come to Christ. Sinners say, listen, boy, when I'm ready, I'll come. And they say, I don't want to come to Jesus. And I'm ready, and then go back. So in the mind of a sinner, 
He had to make himself ready. He had to overcome all his sin. He had to get himself clean. He had to stop, drink, smoke, cuss, this, fornicate, stop, do everything. And when he good and he clean, then he comes to Jesus. By the time he reaches Jesus, Jesus says, hey, but you don't need me. People are not telling us here. The gospel is that Jesus come and die and make it better available because he knows you cannot come over from your faults. The gospel is Jesus come and give you Holy Spirit because he knows you on your own can't overcome your addictions. So why people still feel it, they have to clean themselves and then come to Jesus clean? The gospel is come dirty. That is why Christ died and gave blood and Holy Ghost because he knows you on your own cannot clean. Come dirty. And even in church, people believe that in order to go to the next level in the walk with Christ, you have to clean up yourself. I am saying, offer yourself to Jesus at every level, just as you are. And allow Jesus to make the transformation. Jesus Christ, don't shut away from sin. The sin may not come much with Jesus at all, but man, you will love your past, your sin, and build your conscience, and bring you into love for him and obedience. Are you understanding? God told me that every single one of his children are his people. That's just how it is. The Lord said, too many people are pulling back themselves from a full walk with Jesus. God come to purify your conscience and tell you the sin. Come with all the sin. In fact, Jesus said, I am pursuing sin as the problem is you running away. The Lord is saying, listen, make yourself available and let's build a relationship. In that relationship, you're going to find the strength that you need to overcome sin. I'm saying to you, the Lord wants to have a relationship with you. Allow him, please. After tonight, the beginning of the rest of your life will begin. Begin a new and fresh walk with God. A walk with a pure conscience and a walk that will never feel condemned by any man pointing out to God. I want to encourage you tonight that if you sin, you have an advocate to the Father, you can go to Jesus. Every believer is called to be a repentant believer. Every act of repentance is an act of worship. Every time you say, God, I have sinned, I am sorry, you're making the blood of Jesus on Calvary relevant. You're making the Savior we come and say, yes, amen, this is what I died and shed my blood for. God is not looking for you to come and ashamed because you sin as if you take God by surprise. God is saying, that is your news. Let me tell you, since I was on the cross, I saw you in advance and committing sin and weaknesses. God wants you to make haste and run to the cross, man. You're going in the wrong direction. Stop running away from God. The key to your growth in Christ is every time you sin, you repent. Every time you fall, run to the cross. And every single time, you will hear the Lord saying, I receive your come. I forgive you. Rise up and walk again. Listen, you understand this tonight. Let me tell you something. 20 years from now, I will still be the full month in God or serving God. Because there is nothing is going to be done in conscience and nothing is going to cause you the truth. Ask any man who vibrant in the Lord and successful and faithful and have all those reputations to his name. Ask him in private quarters how many times he stumbled and fell. And if he doesn't understand the goodness and the love of God, he would have given up on himself. And most people that leave Christ have people who give up on themselves because they don't understand that Jesus never gives up on you. Understand Jesus never gives up on you, then you will never give up on yourself. You need to